Hi everyone, this is Grace and today we are going to be decorating this punny little llama set. You are amazing. Great for Valentine's Day or just a I'm thinking of you and I want you to feel special kind of set. <laughs> so first up, we are doing the llama. I've already gone ahead and outlined the shape of the llama with a piping consistency and now I am using a flood consistency to flood the center of the cookie. Now, I have allowed the piping on the outside to dry. I do think it's easier to flood once the outline has dried. And I decided to do two consistencies for this set because this cookie is pretty large. And I just find it easier to do a two consistency on a large cookie because I can use a thinner flood and I don't feel so stressed <laughs> about flooding as quickly as possible. So I'm doing something here called flooding in sections where I am flooding one section. So I flooded the main part of the llama. I allowed that to crust over and now I'm flooding the little extra bits of the ear that are white. But to be honest, later on, I'm actually going to cover that part with an outline on top. So it's not really necessary to do um, the ears of the llama flooded in sections like this. If you really wanted to go all out, you could certainly flood this all in one go. Um, I do find sometimes that when you're flooding next to each other, um, especially next to a white, sometimes there is bleeding, not for me personally, but I know other people have that issue a lot and tend to have less of an issue when you let sections crust over before moving on to flooding something else next to it. But I digress something to keep in mind. The squiggles that I'm using there are to help prevent craters. Um, it's supposed to kind of stabilize the center of the icing to prevent it from kind of caving in from, from the weight of the, the powdered sugar and the meringue powder. Um, but you'll see later, you can see right there <laughs> in that left ear especially, that um, it did still crater a bit, so it's not a perfect science. I find the best ways to prevent craters is to use the thickest icing possible for the application and to use a dehydrator. So in this case, I did use a dehydrator, but I could have used a thicker icing. So just something to keep in mind. Here I'm doing what I call the bear technique. I don't know if that's the official name or not, but that's what I use. And it just means I'm... I allow that base coat to dry completely or like seven, at least 75% 75, 75 dry because if you do not allow this to dry completely, you will poke a hole through it even with just a paintbrush like I was using. And I either use flood consistency or piping consistency depending on how much texture I want. For both the white and the pink, I did a flood consistency because I didn't want too much texture because I know I'm going to be piping other things on top of these surfaces. So I wanted just enough texture to give it a different look, but not too much. And when I'm the, the selection of paintbrush that I use here, I tend to pick something that has kind of a round, big, fluffy end to it. That's my typical preference. Um, I, I did use a smaller brush for that pink because it was gonna be a little harder to get into the little edges of the pink parts. And here I am using a soft peak piping consistency. This is actually an outline sized tip that I've cut in the bag, but I'm just applying a tremendous amount of pressure. I'm applying the amount of pressure that I would as if, say, I was flooding. Um, I chose to use a soft peak because I didn't, you know, I probably could have maybe possibly outlined and, and flooded this heart, um, but I wanted something kind of quicker, easier, and for me, that's just using a thicker piping consistency that kind of settles, for the most part, on its own. Like, it's kind of good enough for me. <laughs> uh, here, I actually did flood consistency for the nose, and I was really surprised that it didn't crater very much on me. So, I might suggest doing a soft peak if you struggle with cratering. And here, I just did, in those hearts, 
Um, again, this is to prevent cratering or at least to attempt to prevent cratering. Uh, not a, not a exact science again. Um, and that's the same thing with the nose there where I did the little heart in the nose. This is all a soft peak piping consistency. And now I'm going in, this is actually a flood. And just, I prefer when I'm flooding in a small space like this, I'd rather get it all perfectly flooded with the tip of the bag than say to use a scribe. I just find that when I use a scribe, I tend to manipulate the shape a bit too much when you're like flooding inside of a shape that's already been piped, if that makes sense, like the sunglasses, for example. And now here I am using the outline consistency, which is somewhere between a soft and a medium peak. And I'm just outlining the shape of the cookie, the design of the cookie. I think I originally intended not to do this outline, but when I saw him, I just felt like he needed a little extra dimension. So this design, I did not come up with this myself. This is actually the design of the cutter. It's a Kaleida Cuts cutter, another one of my favorite cutter makers. And I just needed to fix the little end there with a scribe. And again, so if I had done too much texture on this white here, it would have made piping on top of it quite difficult. So that's why I wanted minimal texture. Too much texture, there would have been a lot of peaks and it would have made my outline pretty lumpy. No good. <laughs> so that is the Sassy Llama. Next up, we have this funky scalloped heart. Again, I've already gone in and outlined with piping consistency. I allow that to dry and now I am flooding. I chose to do two consistency for this because I'm doing a design on the scallop and I needed to have a really precise outline. Um, I tend to have a, <laughs> a, a roaming outline sometimes when I do a one consistency. So I wanted to have more precision, precision, precision with this, which is why I did two consistencies. And here I'm going in with that same soft peak piping consistency and just outlining that scallop. It's hard to see here at this angle, but the key, you can kind of see it in that one I just did there, to these scallops here is that I'm only touching down when I make contact with the pink. So otherwise I'm lifting up the bag around the circle, that's what's going to get me the best line. And sometimes, you know, I'll use a cookie swivel <laughs> to do something like this where I need to change the angle, but I guess today I just wasn't feeling it. So again, here we are, this is a soft peak piping consistency. It looks like a pretty soft, soft peak at this point. Um, I prefer to do a soft peak when, when piping dots because I find that I typically don't have to settle out any sort of peak on the dot. Um, if you're gonna use a thicker consistency, when you pull away from the dot, chances are there will be a little bit of a peak there and you may wanna use, say, a scribe to help it settle so you get a more rounded top to your dot. And that is the Funky Scalloped Heart. Last but not least is the You Are La Amazing plaque. And again, I have done two consistencies here. And for this one, I chose to do two consistencies because of the shape of this cutter. There are so many scallops here. And I just knew if I was doing one consistency, I would not be able to get 
the definition that I need in these scallops. So I did a piping consistency first, allow that to dry. Now I'm doing my flood. I'm absolutely obsessed with this color. I would call this chartreuse, which doesn't come around a lot. Um, <laughs> I started with the Sugar Art Master Elite in Lime. And then I always add just a little bit of colors to each other um, in a set just to help them kind of meld together better. So this is the Master Elite Lime with just a tad of that pink, which somehow kind of made it more chartreuse than lime, but I'm not complaining, I'm a fan. So I've allowed that to dry and now I am going through and I am using my projector for this writing. My projector, I have two different projectors. This is the Bluetooth that I'm using here and I will link the projectors that I have in the description of the video. In this case, I downloaded fonts from dafont.com and I just plugged them into Word and I wrote out what I wanted. Um, I will link this font in the description of the video. It is called Muthiara. It's a great bouncy font for doing pressure piping lettering like I'm doing here, and that means I'm varying the pressure on my bag. More pressure on the downstrokes, releasing my pressure on the upstrokes. It can be a kind of hard lettering to master, but it's definitely my favorite to do. And I like to use a soft peak when doing my lettering. To be honest, I don't remember the font here. Um, it's just something from Word, a sans serif font, pretty basic. And for this one, I'm actually applying a decent amount of pressure to get this thicker lettering. So I'm not just kind of like piping this like I would an outline. I'm actually applying pressure. And this is kind of hard because you have to apply an even amount of pressure the entire time and keep your bag kind of level <laughs> to the surface of the cookie. Uh, so it's harder than it looks, I would say, harder than it looks. But it was just what I was looking for. So once I was done with lettering, I wanted something to just kind of fill in the space a little bit better. And this is a pretty common technique to use an edible marker. Yes, friends, this is edible. <laughs> I will also link this in the description of the video. And I'm just doing some dots just to kind of fill in the white space and, and look at make it look a little bit more kind of polished and more like a thought out design. It was feeling a little too empty with just the lettering. And then I still felt like I need a little something something. So I added some cute little pink hearts, kind of goes with the bigger pink hearts in the set. These are pressure piped hearts where I'm applying a lot of pressure and then releasing a lot of pressure and releasing and pulling away at the same time. So that is the You Are La Amazing plaque. And this is the whole sassy, punny llama set. I love this set so much. I hope that you enjoy watching this video and I hope you make this yourself. And don't forget, you are amazing. <laughs>